Welcome back to the Asheville Vedic Astrology YouTube channel. My name is Fernando Raul Castro Alvarez, and I am part of the four-year Asheville Vedic Astrology Apprenticeship course. And today, Ryan has invited me yet again to talk to you guys about how the planets function for a Sagittarius Ascendant chart. And in this video, we will be discussing the role of Buddha Deva, or Mercury, for people who have Sagittarius Ascending. And what it means to have Sagittarius Ascending, it means that whenever you were born, Sagittarius was ascending in the east. It means that the plane of the observer was intercepting the plane of the ecliptic in a specific degree between 0 and 29 degrees of Sagittarius. And that point, that degree with minutes and seconds, represents the first cusp. It represents the ascendant, the lacna, the anchor that anchors the whole horoscopic chart. It means that point is the starting point from which the astrologer will build the remaining 12 houses of a horoscope which represents the 12 areas through which the karma of the planets and the signs will manifest throughout the lifetime of the Jataka or the person whose horoscope you are assessing. So for a Sagittarius Ascendant chart, Mercury rules both the 7th and the 10th. Patnishtana and Aspalashtana, the place of the partner and the place of power or authority. Now, before we get into the specifics of the houses, it is very important to first understand what Mercury is. And um, Mercury is a very polyvalent planet. He is the great actor. He is the chameleon of the planets. If we have a good dignity, uh, Mercury, he represents that Swiss army knife that we take out when we go out to the wilderness and saves the day whenever we are in trouble. Uh, Mercury, as we're going to see, is a very polyvalent planet. And through this polyvalence, a well-dignified Mercury has the ability to reinforce any sort of weakness in our chart by learning, by simulating that quality that that weakened planet uh, does not have. And through this simulation, Mercury is able to help out uh, a person with something that he lacks or is weak, okay? So first of all, it is very important to remember that Mercury is a neuter planet. Mercury is just like Saturn. He's neither a man or a woman, uh, or there I say he's neither female nor male. However, depending on the dignity, he's able to ascertain male qualities or female qualities whenever they are necessary. At the same time, Mercury is famously neutral. As you all know, he is malefic in association with malefics. He's benefic with association with benefics. However, if you read the classics, if you read Brihat Parashara Hora Shastra, if you read uh, Jaimini Upadesha Sutras, you will understand that even though Mercury is neutral, he has a, in, an inherent benefic quality to it because you will see Parashara talk about Mercury along the lines of Venus and Jupiter as a benefic planet in terms of his influence and his aspect. Okay, uh, it's very interesting that people know that Mercury is bad with malefics, Mercury is good with benefics. However, Mercury, when he is alone in a house, he is quite polyvalent. He will retain this beneficence I just mentioned, but having Mercury alone in a house is like having a preteen girl or boy home alone. Is he or she going to behave? Well, that will depend upon the quality of that being, of that Mercury, obviously. At the same time, Mercury in the very important uh, planetary cabinet metaphor of the planet, he is the prince of the planets. He is the heir apparent to the sun and the moon, who are the king and the queen, respectively. He is the planet that is responsible for administering bureaucratic affairs in the kingdom. He is uh, the one who administers the sort of secondary tasks that do not uh, correspond to the primary tasks uh, that the sun and the moon have to deal with. But at the same time, he's a prince. He's a youth. He's a teenager or a preteen, depending on what you use as a metaphor. So he likes to go out. He likes to party. He likes to eat and drink. He likes to hang out with girls, a lot of girls. He also likes to play in the casino. You know, he's basically this youth that is not yet king. So he has to, you know, enjoy 
to the maximum the remaining time he has as the Delphon or the Duke or the Prince, right? Uh, at the same time, he is of a Baishia class. So he is of a merchant class. So we're going to see that Mercury has a natural predisposition to deal, I'm sorry, in dealing with numbers and measurements and this idea of the trans uh, transformation of goods through exchange of buying and selling. And at the same time, you know, uh, addressing material needs through interpersonal interaction through these material means. And at the same time, Mercury is a Rajasic planet. And Rajas Guna is defined in the Bhagavad Gita as the principle of passion. So Mercury is going to be a passionate planet. And he's going to follow his or her passion uh, to its uh, logical conclusion. Now, we must remember that Mercury is logic, but Mercury is not immediate logic like Mars. You know, Mars will do something and he will not think uh, further down the road. Mercury, however, is long-term logic. Even though he's a passionate planet, he will be able to ascertain to what degree he should, you know, uh, follow that logic. That's why he is not a tamasic planet like Mars, where he will automatically follow the logic no matter what happens. But Mercury will think about it uh, quite um, uh, quite specifically, okay? And at the same time, Mercury is a very interesting planet in terms of doshas because he has all three doshas. And doshas are very important to Ayurveda, which is the science of health and diet in uh, Vedic uh, studies. And uh, Mercury is both pita, bata, and kapha. Pita is fire, the union of water and fire. Bata is air, the union of ether or akasha and uh, wind, and um, kapha is, I mean, yeah, kapha, yeah, I, did I say, bata is the second, kapha is basically earth, which is the union of water and earth. So, you know, pita is fire, so pita is the power of transformation, of transmutation, of alchemical change, okay? Vata is the power of uh, transportation, of moving from point A to point B, and kapha did I say kapha? I meant vata. If I said kapha, I meant vata. And kapha is basically the power of substance, of structure. So we're going to see that Mercury is going to be a planet that is going to be able to transform things, to move things, and to support things. And here we can see through all these characteristics why Mercury is so polyvalent, why he's the chameleon, why he is you know, that Swiss army knife that is going to be able to help us whenever we need it. As I mentioned before, Mercury rules the 7th and the 10th, which are angular houses, which are Kendra houses. And we must remember that the angular houses, the 1st, the 10th, the 7th, and the 4th, the Ascendant, the Medium Coeli, the Descendant, and the Inum Coeli, are basically the most important charts in a horoscope because they represent the spinal cord of any chart. Planets within these houses will have a lot of energy, will have a lot of predisposition towards concrete and conscious action in life. And Mercury rules not only one, but two of these houses, Patnishtana, the seventh, the place of the partners, and Aspalashtana, the tenth place, the place of power and authority. So basically the seventh uh, is uh, the house of otherness, the house of interpersonal relationships, both platonic, interpersonal, uh, of a romantic and professional nature. It's also the house of trade, and the house of travels. We must remember that if the first house is us or Jew, uh, the seventh house is others, okay? And at the same time, the first is the immediate place where we are and the seventh is the farthest place away. This is why it is the house of travel. At the same time, the 10th house is the house of career, of profession, of public life. It is of the house of the status among others. And here we will see that Mercury will rule over these houses. And if we were going to describe Mercury with keywords, they would be intellect, knowledge, analysis, communications, and skills, which are going to form the basis uh, of these houses. And a Sagittarius Lagna person will address these houses from this mercurial perspective. So in essence, how can we bring together all these significators. Well, first of all, we're going to see that for a Sagittarius Lagna person, these are going to be people who are going to be very analytical about the, 
the people they meet, the people they engage with, and at the same time, very analytical, very picky about the sort of profession or career they choose. These are the sort of natives that will be very critical about the people they meet, very critical about their partners, very critical about their professional relationships, very critical about their workplace, very critical about their career, very critical about the way they manifest themselves among others. Um, these people are going to be picky. And we know this because, you know, Virgo is picky. And at the same time, you know, uh, Gemini is not as picky as Virgo, but Gemini has a lot of, you know, uh, being able to choose what to try out and what not to try out. So we're going to see that these are going to be people who are going to be uh, very specific about the type of person they're going to go out with. You know, these are the type of people who were, will have a, a will do and will not do list in terms of the interpersonal relationships they um, engage with. Uh, they will also have a do and do not list in terms of the careers or professions they will do or at least the things they won't or will do in terms of their public life. So they're going to be very analytical about this because they are very aware about the minor details in terms of interpersonal relationships and career. At the same time, these are going to be people who are going to be very communicative, very communication oriented in their interpersonal relationships, in their workplace. These are going to be people who will understand the power of words and the power of communication when it comes to relationships and when it comes to profession. These are going to be the type of people who will not be afraid to talk uh, to other people about the important things that matter. For example, these are not going to be the type of people who are going to walk off from an important conversation that has to do with their job. These are not the type of people who will avoid important conversations with their loved ones. These are people who are going to be very assertive, very proactive in terms of achieving that communication connection when it comes to professions and interpersonal relationships. But more importantly, you know, these are going to be polyvalent persons when it comes to interpersonal relationships and professions. You know, these are going to be the type of persons, as I said, who are going to be picky, but maybe these are going to be the type of people that, you know, in one epoch of their life dated a sort of type of person and then dated another type of person. Uh, these will be the type of persons who might have worked in some sort of job at the beginning of their life and in middle age they work in another job and at late age they are still working or at least, you know, um, doing what they want to do that is not the same as the things they did before. You know, we have to remember that Mercury, according to Parashara, is the natural Baba Karka of the 10th, although some people also allude Saturn as being the natural Karka of the 10th, since he is the seventh planet and corresponds to the seventh uh, Barga, which is the Dasamsha, which has to do with the 10th. But in essence, you know, having Mercury as a Baba Karka of the 10th, and for a Sagittarius Lagna having Mercury ruling the 10th, we're going to see that these are people who are going to have a lot of alternatives, who are going to have a lot of possibilities in terms of their professional development. These are the type of people that might have a, a more than one job at the same time. You know, these might be people who are like race car drivers and doctors and at the same time they, they like like Feng Shui or something. Um, so, you know, with this regency, you might see a person who is able to uphold different types of jobs at the same time or a person who changes jobs throughout life or a person that might struggle with all these capacities to develop different areas of profession. Specifically, uh, depending on the dignity of Mercury and that 10th house. And at the same time, you know, th these are going to be people who are going to be, um, you know, open-minded in terms of their relationships with other people, not just of a sexual nature, but also maybe from an ideological nature. Maybe these are people who seem to be some uh, type of person, but might associate with a person who's completely opposite to his uh, own ideas of who he is because he is this type of person who is polyvalent. As long as the other person has the requisites of maybe like being, you know, polite, educated, you know, there might be no problems if they're complete opposites. Because once again, Mercury has the capacity to uphold, you know, appearances, to uphold things that maybe we are not, but that we appear in order to survive and succeed in life. Now, 
We must also remember that each of these houses will be seen through the filter of the Rashi they occupy. And the seventh will be seen through the filter of Gemini, which is the filter of trial and other error of exploration and skill development in relation to others. You know, this will be the type of person who will, you know, um, seek out uh, experimentation when it comes to meeting people or traveling. You know, these are not the type of people that just travel because they want to have those uh, Girl Scouts medals uh, or, you know, having those uh, prices in their social media of the luxury or the pleasure of just traveling. No, these are per people who might travel because of the seventh house, just travel because they find a place interesting because they want to try out new things. You know, these are the type of people who are very critical about their uh, partners, but, you know, try to try to try things out with their partners in terms of seeking out new things and exploring. And at the same time, the 10th will be seen through the filter of Virgo. And the filter of Virgo is the filter of achievements, of a purification desire and c concreteness in relationship, in relation, I'm sorry, in relationship, yeah, that, that's a correct word, <laughs> in relationship to the career or the profession we have in life. You know, these are people who might be working in really mundane professions, very uh, down-to-earth professions, maybe very blue-collar oriented professions, but face that profession from a very spiritual point of view. We have to remember that Virgo is the most concrete sign in the whole of the zodiac. But at the same time, is the sign that is most preoccupied with that desire for purification, of just leaving that matter behind and achieving greatness. So this is the type of people that might uh, do jobs that are just very plain, very solid, very concrete, but they are very brainy, very intellectual, very analytical about them. Maybe you are a waiter, but you study astrology. Maybe you are a lawyer, but you love Adribella. Maybe you are a person who works as a mechanic, but has a pretty deep preoccupation with what lies uh, in the other side. So these are going to be very um, uh, typical qualities to that Virgo nature in the 10th, in addition to the things that I mentioned about being picky, being analytical, being, um, you know, very critical about these areas. At the same time, and I, I almost uh, forgot about this, having Mercury uh, ruling the seven, ruling Gemini, that means that a, a, a Sagittarius Latina person might gravitate towards a younger person as a partner. He, it might also represent... Uh, that the person, the, the Sagittarius Latin person, might gravitate to a person who is um, involved maybe in uh, artistic or um, skill, uh, let's say artisan skill sets, artistic skill sets, skills that have to do with arbitration, that have to do maybe even with law or social um, predispositions in terms of figure out, figuring out things between people. But, you know, we have to remember that Mercury represents truth. So at the same time, we're going to see that a person might gravitate towards younger partners. And at the same time, partners who are not as serious as, as one is. Because we have to remember that Sagittarius is the place of religious, of guru. It's the uh, place of higher philosophical perspectives. And Gemini is basically trial and error. It's experimentation. It's just, you know, me being out in the city. And, and that has a juxtaposition of old and young, of wise and intelligent. So we might see that as a potential for relationships. At the same time, we must remember that Mercury gets exalted in the 10th and gets debilitated in the 4th in Pisces. So here we see a very interesting thing, which uh, alludes to this uh, cliché, a modern quality within the modern description of Sagittarius in modern astrology, which is that, you know, Sagittarius natives are very extrovert. And here we see that in order to triumph in the field of relationships, of interpersonal affairs, of otherness, and of our career and profession, we have to work. We have to really walk the walk and talk the talk. We have to exert ourselves in public life and grasp that power and manage it 
for our own well-being. We have to work with other people and use other people to work with them in order to achieve what we have to achieve. And we have to remember also that here, Sagittarius Lagna is only one of four uh, Lagnas where we get Badra Yoga, which is one of the Panchamahapurusha Yogas, which allude to the Tara planets, which basically means, you know, uh, Pancha Mahapurusha Yogas means the five yogas of great people, which allude to the five star planets, which are the five starry planets, which are Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. And the version of Mercury is called Badra Yoga, which means bless or bliss, or it also means tree. And Badra Yoga occurs when Mercury is exalted, Swakshetra or Mulatikona in angular houses or Kendra houses, the first, the fourth, the tenth, and the seventh. And that only happens with Jupiterian uh, ascendants and Hermetic or Mercurial ascendants. So if we have Mercury in the seventh or in the tenth, we're going to be very successful in terms of relationships and career. But once again, we have to really engage with that extroverted principle in terms of seeking out people, seeking out opportunities to triumph in life. But at the same time, Mercury gets debilitated, gets Nisha in the fourth, which alludes to the idea of not bringing the professional to the home. Uh, maybe Sagittarius Lagna people are not the best people to work from home. These are the people uh, that should avoid bringing uh, troubles from the professional life to the domestic life. These are people that might wish to avoid any deep emotional entanglements with profession and even with relationships because they might bring some sort of uh, intelligence problem or some sort of difficulty in organizing our lives, in setting boundaries. Um, if we have Mercury in the fourth, we might have difficulty uh, setting a boundary between what is professional and what is personal, between our domestic life and our public life. So we have to take that into consideration. A Sagittarius Lacna person has to be able to draw the line between, you know, this is my personal space and this is my public persona. So don't be surprised if you meet a Sagittarius Lacna person, if you have a boyfriend or girlfriend who is who behaves in a specific way in his personal life and then behaves in another way in their professional life. Because we see here with this juxtaposition that there is a tendency for this to develop. And at the same time, we should avoid, uh, you know, bringing problems of interpersonal relationships or, uh, or, or professional problems to our you know, family or talk, uh, talk about it with our mother or our parents. Just try to avoid mixing fun with work and work with fun, or at least you know, uh, profession with the person. So um, basically, uh, this is my video for how Mercury works for Sagittarius Lagna. I hope you liked it. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them down in the comments. From time to time, I'll drop by and check out the comments. So maybe I'll, I'll try to answer your questions. If you have other questions, then, you know, Ryan loves when you ask questions, specifically questions that have to do with planets per sign or planets per house. I mean, he loves those questions. You know, what does my Jupiter and Sagittarius mean? He loves that. So keep writing those questions. He will quickly answer them. So I hope you liked it and I'll see you in the next video where we will be discussing the role of Chandra Leva or the moon for a Sagittarius Lacna person. So take care until the next one. Uh, I wish you strength, serenity, and wisdom. Take care.